So on the Hibox team, um, in the last couple of weeks, we've spent a lot of effort trying to get uh, our application deployed into the cloud uh, onto Amazon's web services. And this week, um, we've managed to deploy using Elastic Beanstalk, which is a pretty interesting um, cloud management framework from Amazon um, that lets us deploy instances of the application, hand, load balance them, uh, and auto scale. Uh, so we, we were able to deploy our um, Rails application here and set up configuration um, that will let us scale up or down uh, in response to a variety of triggers, including um, network I.O. or CPU usage um, or just uh, time of day, um, which is a really powerful way to um, handle unexpected user load and save costs when user load is at a minimum. Um, we've done some work to automate uh, this infrastructure deployment. Um, so we were able to deploy Solar Fedora, the Hydra application, uh, and take advantage of a variety of other Amazon services, including their EC2 instances, the database service RDS and Elastic Cache to provide our Redis dependencies. Uh, and this is all wrapped up in CloudFormation um, scripting um, that lets us quickly deploy this uh, and stamp out uh, identical environments as needed. An example of our application deployed in the cloud is um, here, uh, and I'm going to demonstrate some multi-tenancy features we've been working on. So in, in this case, we have two tenants uh, for our Hibox application, tenant A here and tenant B. Uh, the difference is in the URL. Um, and you'll also notice the application name is different uh, between the two uh, hosts. As an administrator for this application, I can go in and change this. Um, Instead of calling the application tenant A, I'll call it best tenant, um, and this uh, will automatically uh, change, updating the page title, um, the brand name, and a variety of other uh, areas in the application where we're exposing the tenant name. Um, we expect in future sprints to add additional configuration options uh, and uh, really begin to explore how multi tenancy uh, affects our applications. I think that's it for me. Do you want to show the other tenant and just prove I that can, it has a I can title? show that here, here we have tenant B, uh, and it still is tenant B. I can give it a totally separate tenant. We'll call it annoying tenant. Um, there we go. Uh, right now, our, our multi tenancy is, is only limited to the database. Um, so anything in the database uh, is not shared between the applications. They are sharing Fedoras and Zolars right now, um, although we expect to tackle that in an upcoming sprint. Okay. Thank you, Chris. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now. <laughs> okay, great. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Great. All right, so what I'm going to show today is some of the work that's been going on in some of the gems that Hydra in a Box depends on, which includes Sufia and curation concerns and other Hydra community components. So this is uh, very similar uh, to what you just saw in Chris's demo. I have labeled my site Hydra Sprint 3 demo see right there and what I'm going to show today in particular is some of the work that Justin Coyne has been working on um, on a new workflow so last week I showed a demo of the new work workflow which is where you add one new multi-file work and this week I'm going to show the new uh, batch create workflow it's at this point I'd say it's mostly done there are a couple of small tweaks we're going to be making but um, the batch creation workflow is really an extension of what you might consider the legacy Sufia workflow, which is where you just toss a bunch of files up. 
you might not care um, to keep those files as um, uh, aggregated things as works. You might just want, you know, each file is basically its own work. So let's go ahead and go through this. You'll notice um, some of these edit buttons and this big ugly red bar here. That's because I'm an administrator and these are editable content blocks. Just to mention that, you don't normally see this red bar if you're just coming to the site as a non-administrator. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and create a new batch. So I'll add some files. I'm going to add these four publications and I'll go ahead and start the upload. All right, those are all done. There's a new display label that I can use. Is that basically a, a title? Here, I'll just change a couple of these real quick. Okay, and imagine I change those two, change the visibility, and now I'm going to add some metadata. You'll see over here. Okay. So with batch creation, this is one of the changes that we need to make, but right now this title and this metadata that you see here will be applied to every single file individually. So one of the changes we're gonna be making is stripping title out of here because titles should be um, per file, like you just saw over here. These are the per file titles. So we still need to put something here because it's required, so. And I'll put in a, creator as well I will you'll see that these are both check marks now that means I can submit and save my work I'll check the deposit agreement and save it so what this is doing I have some background workers running it may take a, a little bit of time because it's characterizing the files it's validating the submission it's taking the uploaded files and pushing them into the repository applying the metadata running a virus check. There's a number of uh, background jobs that are running serially right now because I'm running this in, uh, in development mode on my laptop. So that's gonna go and hopefully it will finish very soon. Is there anything else I can show in the meantime? I, can sh I didn't show this bar too much. It's a new navigation bar that the Sophia UI working group spec'd out. So this is the new admin settings that Chris showed you. This is the dashboard. When my batch upload completes, I believe I'll get a notification here that'll light up and tell me that my batch is now um, ready. You've seen the new work workflow last week. You saw the batch create this week, which is still running. And you can see the collections over here. And I do have one collection. Okay, so what you see now is the list of works. You'll notice that the, the works that I created a title for, a display label, that has been applied. And the ones where I left it blank, uh, those are the, the file names as a default. And that's already there. I can even show you one of these. So this is a work. It has one file. And that's the batch creation workflow. Do folks have anything else they want to demo or talk about on the demo? Okay, great. I believe that's the end of our demo. Thanks for watching. We'll do another one next week.